I was talking about Targa meeting Pasquale Roque in 1888. At that time, Pasquale Roque uh, was making guitars, uh, buying student guitars, and putting his own label on those guitars as well. You see a variety of labels if you do the research. Uh, Pasquale Rock eventually put out a three-volume uh, method, which uh, was kind of developed from manuscripts he got as a student with Francisco Tarraga. And that was after he had moved to Cuba and actually played Carnegie Hall in 1918. In 1890, Tarraga met Dr. Walter Lecky, who became a financial supporter of his and took a lot of lessons. Tarraga played a casino in Vienna in uh, October 11th of 1890. His daughter Conchita got sick on the 12th of, uh, I should say, the 11th of December 1890, and she passed away on the 22nd, shortly before Christmas in the year 1890. Francisco met Miguel Yobet at the guitar shop in Barcelona called Cal's Guitarés. That was in 1892. And that was when Miguel was 14. That shop was on or near Calle Ancha, Career Ancha. And at that location on that street, you had Juana Struck uh, workshop. You had the Rebe, Jaime Rebo y Bautista Alcaniz shop, as well as Jose Saratosa, all uh, congregated in that same area within blocks of each other on the same street. In uh, June of 1893, he wrote to Felipe Pedral, a very well-known musicologist, and then after that he left for London. Uh, at that time he did manuscripts of Carnival of Venice, uh, dated the uh, 22nd of June, 1893, Romanzo uh, Sin Palabras, uh, on the 23rd of June, 1893, La Traviata, on the 25th of July, 1893. In a newspaper on the 15th of November, 1893, it was reported he was in northern Spain in Zaragoza. In uh, 1894, of February of that year, he played in uh, Cannes in Nice and Monte Carlo. He dislocated his left hand, small fingers, fourth fingers, pinky finger. Couldn't play the concerts in Nice, France. He met Queen Isabel II in February of 1894. He met Elvira Mingo, who he gave lessons to, and he thought he might do a duet in public create a duo for ongoing performances. And uh, he wrote to her on the 31st of March in 1894. And she was such a good guitarist, that's why uh, Tarraga as a 40th year, I should say a 40-year-old, 40 42-year-old guitarist thought about doing a concert, and she entertained the idea with her father, uh, being a wealthy gentleman, of purchasing La Leona. In 1882, the guitar was silenced by the death of Julian Arcas, passing away in 1882. And Jose Tabosa Martinez writes on the 26th of November in 1893 about La Leona, and uh, in April, on the 13th of 1894, Tyraga writes about a guitar called La Fea. It's another guitar made by Taurus. 
and Targa writes about La Leona being in the possession of Elvira on the 10th of May of 1894. He asks for a receipt on the 24th showing that the guitar belongs to her and that she is the owner. And at this time, Nicholas de Torres uh, wrote to Targa about the price and to not divulge the actual price paid to other relatives. Uh, this would be two years after Antonio de Torres had passed away. At this time, in uh, Almeria, also Jose Lopez Beltran at times was selling Torres guitars uh, for uh, the widow and uh, children as well. And uh, he had worked from 1887 to 1892 with uh, Antonio de Torres, helping him in the last five years of his life put together the last 50 guitars. Uh, the price mentioned was 2,500 duros, uh, one duro being five pesetas, so it's, and he said to tell the brother that 4,000 was paid for it, tell other people that were public members, oh, I hear you, this guitar became available to your student, the La Leona, tell other people that 1,000 pesetas uh, was paid for it, 1,000 duros or 5,000 pesetas. On the 28th of December in 1894, he wrote a letter to Trinidad de Don Juan, whose real name was Consuelito Soler. She was a pianist. Uh, he sent a photo to her on the uh, 14th of May of 1894. In February of 1896, he was with Dr. Walter Lecky again, and some manuscripts uh, survived from that point, Serenata, Serenata Mariska by Chapi, uh, dated uh, February 5th, 1896, Pavana by Albanese from the 8th of February, 1896, uh, Adio by uh, Virao, spelled W-E-Y-R-A-U-C-H, but pronounced in German Virao, uh, and that was signed and dated the uh, 17th of March of 1896. Targa got a review for playing at the Piazza in Sevilla uh, on the uh, 2nd of May of 1896. In uh, November, on the 26th of 1897, he played at the Playel Theater in Paris, very well known location, and he had two students, Alfred uh, and Jules Cartin, uh, performing, and also there was an Estudiantina that was involved uh, on the bill at that theater for that concert. He wrote to Alfred Cartin again on the uh, 3rd of February of 1898. Uh, one of his patrons, Concha Gomez de Jacobi, uh, who he wrote the first version of Recuerdas de la Lambra. It uh, had different names before that, and that was dated on the 8th of December, 1899. In 1899, he returned to Calle Valencia in uh, Barcelona. On, in April uh, 17th, of 1899, he did a concert in Granada. At the age of 47, he had rheumatism that had been with him for years. He did a uh, Chopin Prelude Number no. Seven manuscript on Christmas, uh, 1899. He did a uh, minuet by Handel on the 12th of January, 1900. Fragment of a string quartet by Mozart for two guitars. Slow Waltz number three by Chopin on the 11th of December of 1900. Also uh, Granada by Albanese, uh, Melody of Sicilian Vespers by Verdi. He met uh, Saint Sans, the composer in Algiers. Camille liked his version of Nocturne number two Opus 9, number 2 by Chopin, 
in E flat. I used to play that about 40 years ago. It was a delightful piece, a lot of work. I had that memorized maybe three times in my career. I am a fifth generation student of Francisco Targa. I studied with, I began studying with Byron Pang around the 70th anniversary of uh, the passing of uh, Francisco Targa in uh, December of 1979. And I studied with Byron for two years, two months. Byron Pang passed away many years ago. He was a computer programmer for Apple at the end of his life, but he was a student of Jose Ray de la Torre from 1966 to 1970. And then Jose said, would you like to teach here at the Music and Arts Institute? in San Francisco. That's a institution of higher learning now defunct, but Byron taught there for three or four years, 45 people a week. Jose Ray de la Torre studied with Miguel Ubet from 1932 to 1934 in Barcelona and uh, used to play baseball and try to keep it unknown from Miguel because Miguel wouldn't want him breaking uh, fingernails playing baseball with guys in the street. And I recently, several months ago, found some Jose Redelatory concerts that were uh, performed in Barcelona. And so I did the uh, talks and showing of the uh, program to the audience uh, that watches my camera uh, several months ago here on YouTube. Tarraga wrote to Tomas Breton to tell that the Capriccio Arab was about to be published. Breton responded to him on the 14th of October, 1901. Tarraga wrote to Daniel Fortea on the 30th of December of 1901. Around that time, manuscripts exist to show the method book that Francisco uh, had an idea of putting together was being written, but it was never published in his lifetime. Uh, in spring of 1902, Pujol got to meet Francisco Tarraga. Uh, Francisco uh, introduced Pujol to uh, Enrique Garcia. Pujol bought a 1902 uh, Enrique Garcia guitar, later bought a 1905 that got stolen, but later returned. You can see that there's a great video about Emilio Pujol, it's in Spanish and Catalan with uh, subtitles on YouTube uh, about the life and career of uh, Emilio Pujol, very enlightening. It's about 50 minutes long, I encourage you to see it, learn from it. In June 1902, uh, Francisco Tarraga played at the Els Quatre Gats in Barcelona, that would mean the four cats in English. And at that time, he did a, it was probably his first concert uh, where he used short nails. He wrote to Daniel Fortea from Novelda on the 10th of July of 1902. Uh, a, a player named Fre Federico Garcia Sanchez met Targa when he was a child. He recounts that story in 1959, 50 years after Targa had passed away. He became a uh, good player and uh, published sheet music. I think I still have some in the $30,000 I have of sheet music unsold here at Fine Fretted String Instruments. We're open 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday. Antiki Tena uh, released six pieces, originals by Targa while he was in Valencia and that was uh, in that period of time in 1902. I'm going to show you what the sheet music looked like. I have quite a bit, dozens of pages about Francisco Targa. Here's an antique Tena sheet music cover shown. And later, Targa had pieces published by Vidal Limona y Bocetta in Barcelona. You see different editions here.
And I'll go into a little more depth of that later. Let's see, Francisco wrote to Daniel Fortea on the 9th of September, 2000, uh, 1902, from Barcelona. Then he was in Valencia uh, on the 29th of October of 1902. He was uh, in a uh, hotel at Cirilio Amoros. Amoros Calle, he's on the third floor. And when he was there, he did the Andante Cantabile Sonata Patetica by uh, Beethoven. That manuscript was written on the 5th of November of 1902. In December 1902, he heard from Jose Ramirez, who invited him to do a concert in Madrid, but he negated it because he had uh, shortly to go on a tour in Italy. At this time, Targa feared playing in public because he had uh, rheumatism and other health problems. In the last decade of his life, his abilities weren't like they were previously. We had other virtuosos such as Fernando Sor. He had problems impressing critics in 1834 five years before he passed away. He suffered a negative review in that year of a live performance. Uh, I found that in the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale uh, de France uh, and the French National Library online uh, a matter of years ago, shared it with 20 colleagues. Uh, then Tarraga went to Bilbao in northern Spain. He met Alarion uh, Leloup, who eventually became a uh, stalwart Targa student in, uh, in Argentina. He arrived, I think, 1912, 1914. Uh, they, there's photos and concert programs uh, in my book, Annotations for the History of the Classical Guitar uh, in Argentina, 1822 to 2000. Lots of information about Alari and Loop in my book. And, uh, in fact, a photo of uh, Targa with members of the Sociedad Guitarística de Bilbao. Targa smoked constantly. In 1900, he began to play with just his fingertips, short uh, fingernails. He was living at Calle Valencia 234 in Barcelona. His friends would come over and they would be there anywhere from 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening. He went to the home of Apelli's Mestres every Wednesday without fail unless he was out of town doing concerts or visiting friends in other locations. Jose Ferrer wrote to uh, Francisco Tarraga on the 30th of December 1888 from Paris. He mentions his minuets that he's dedicated to the maestro. Uh, Tarraga wrote to Fort Daniel Forte on January 1st, New Year's Day, 1903, congratulating him on the performance of the Rondaya of Bandorias. Tarraga heard from Jose Ramirez again, uh, inviting him to please come and do concerts in Madrid, but Tarraga left for Italy on the 14th of January of 1903. He went with Francisco Carell, Manuel Heal, Dr. Walter Lecky. They all together as a group of friends and guitarists uh, visited Genoa, Milan, Florence, Naples, and Rome. And uh, tickets were five lira, which is equal to a dollar in the United States. At that time in 1903, carpenters were making about two and a half dollars a day, about $750 a year. He wrote uh, letters to his wife on the 27th of March, 1903, again on the 31st of March to his wife in 1903. On, he wrote to Daniel Fortea on the 30th of April, 1903, said he would leave for Spain at the end of May. 
took him a little while longer to get back from Italy. Uh, in that time, he did uh, manuscripts for Sueno on the 11th of March, Lucia, Luce, Lucia Laman Moor by Donizetti. That was from a that was a transcript of a Madame Sidney Pratton uh, a version of it that was written on the 16th of April, uh, 1903. Motivos Españoles. 16th as well of April 1903, Marcha Hauser by Wagner uh, on the uh, 27th of April, Preludio uh, number no. 4 on the 6th of May 1903, La Traviata on the 8th of May 1903, did a piece by Caballero, La Via Seta on the 6th of July from Barcelona in 1903. In October of 1903, Antiki Tena published 11 works. I'll show you the piece here. So this is from my book. This is volume one. And so we see the Capriccio Arab, Preludia Number no. 1, La Mariposa, Gran Valtz, Adelita, Largo by Beethoven, Preludio uh, uh, Chopin, uh, Rosita, Marietta, uh, Minuetto by Schubert, another one by Beethoven, Haydn, and uh, so you could buy it all as a volume of all pieces for eight pesetas, or you could buy them individually. And that was a fixed price, it says Precio Fijo, in the upper, just above the price list there. I guess I love history. And also, there's a manuscript that exists from the 20th of October, 1903. He wrote to Fortea on the 27th of December, 1903. Uh, he did the Intermezzo, by Car of Car Intermezzo from Carmen by Bizet from the city or town of Denia on the 17th of February, 1904. Uh, minuet by Beethoven on the 9th of March, 1904. He was in Alicante on uh, 26th of March. His son wrote and said he was falling in love. Francisco advised his kid not to let his love life get in the way of his uh, personal life. Told him to end the relationship with the lady. He did a concert in Valencia, the 16th of June, 1904. He wrote to Gar uh, to Daniel Fortea on the uh, 15th of August, uh, 1904. Talked about uh, I've described to Enrique that he should make you an affordable guitar and uh, let you make payments on it. Students would send payment money to Targa through the mail, 50 pesetas, etc. We'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, Jose uh, Robledo, his daughter Josefina, uh, wrote to Targa. He wrote to Targa. Wrote to Josefina Robledo's father on the 26th of August, 1904, on the 11th of September, 1904, and again on the 10, uh, 6th of October, 1904. At this time, Josefina Robledo uh, was seven years old. She eventually went to uh, Argentina and also taught for many years in Brazil before returning to stay forever in Valencia. I have a lot on Josefina Robledo photos, uh, guitars made uh, in Brazil with her name on the label. Uh, those are pretty rare to find. 
Targa departs for Castellón on the 7th of October 1904. He plays a concert on October 20th. It was reviewed on the 22nd. On the 24th of October, there was an announcement for a concert in Almazora. Uh, there was a review on the 27th, uh, and it was, or I should say, the concert was to take place on the 27th of October, and it was reviewed on the 28th. Uh, he had a review of a concert in uh, Valle de So I have this in my book from a John Roberts uh, English uh, uh, couple pages from the BMG magazine. Uh, so that's a part of my Targa expose that goes on for uh, a variety of uh, pages, dozens of pages. He did a concert in Villarreal, city where he was born, uh, and that was on the 15th of November. 1904. It was reviewed on the 17th. He wrote to the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Robledo on the 16th of December 1904. He wrote to Garcia, uh, or excuse me, he wrote to Daniel Fortea on the uh, 6th of December about Garcia having the guitar ready. Uh, he writes to uh, the editor of El Geraldo de Al Alcoy. That's a city where Alhambra guitars are produced today. Uh, hoy en día, as we say in Spanish. Uh, and that was on the 30th of November, 1904. He wrote again to the Robledos on the 23rd of December, saying Merry Christmas. Writes to the Robledos on the uh, 23rd of January 1905, he was asking for a room in that he was going to come to the town where they live, and uh, Jose Robledo sent him a telegram to get the response to him very quickly on the 25th of January, saying, don't worry, the room is already ready for you uh, here at the home where we live. He writes to Jose Robledo again on the 1st of February 1905 about having a grave attack. This is the first stroke he uh, had. When we look at some of the photos of Targa in my book, some of these photos were taken after the stroke was, took place. Here's a photo from 1906 with Francisco Targa holding a 1906 Enrique Garcia guitar. This was number 76, uh, number 74. I have number 81 sitting here. But this photo was taken after Targa had already suffered his first... Uh, uh, stroke. Here's a 1907, number 81, Enrique Garcia. <laughs> Francisco Targa more than likely played dozens of guitars. He lived 1.3 miles away from Enrique Garcia's shop. Every five and a half weeks or so, Enrique would finish a guitar. He was making about nine or ten, maybe eleven guitars a year at the most. So by 1909, he had, had number 99 made. So he made 100 guitars that were numbered from 1900 to the end or towards the end of 1909. And then we have the other guitars that were unnumbered. Here's a 1897 Enrique Garcia. Targa probably played this. At times we see ads on uh, the internet for guitars. <laughs> This was 
was made in 1897. It's maple back and sides. The first guitar I played has a tornabos. This does not have a tornabos. But Targa probably played these, you know, and Ricky would say, hey, in, in dos dias me voy a tener esta guitarra lista a tocar. In two days I'm going to have this guitar ready to play. And Targa would come back and he would play. It was a 15, 20 minute walk from his home. And this would be at a time when Targa was already used to living near guitar makers, as I mentioned earlier today and also in another talk months ago. The Targa lived on Calle Jesus y Maria uh, 27 in Madrid, and he couldn't, wa he couldn't walk to the conservatory to take his classes without walking by shops where guitars were made. This was a fact. This was something he uh, did all the time. Uh, let me show you another photo. I was just talking about Targa. May, having photos taken of him. Uh, after the first stroke in 1905. This photo here is from a Japanese magazine, 1952. Uh, yeah, this is on the centenary, cent centennial of his birth. And so this fo photo where you see Targa uh, playing there, I have another photo of, I'm gonna try and find it real quick. Uh, that was taken after the stroke took place. Well, uh, it's earlier in the book. Here we go. It's uh, page 27 of my book. So there's this photo. I just showed you a Japanese newspaper. Newspaper is a shimbun in Japanese. And um, so this photo was taken by a famous photographer. His name was Novella. And... Um, this was after the stroke of 1905. The photo was taken, I believe, in 1906. I may be talking about that by the time I finish the exploits of Francisco Tarraga. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, Tarraga wrote to Jose Robledo on the 1st of February 1905 about having a grave attack, about having a stroke. He wrote again to Jose on the 5th of February about being later than expected in his arrival. And he wrote again to him on the uh, 10th of February. He wrote to Josefina herself uh, who was now uh, eight years old. Uh, and he wrote that letter on the 27th of March. He wrote to Mr. Robledo on the 21st of April, 1905, saying he was sorry that Josefina was sick. In the beginning of May, Tyraga went back to Barcelona after giving lessons to uh, Josefina having visited the family and stayed there in a room they provided for him. It's kind of like when um, Domingo Pratt, Miguel Yobet gave Maria Luisa Anito uh, lessons in uh, Buenos Aires. They had their own room. They had their own uh, valet as well, Major Domo. Uh, he wrote to Jose Robledo on the 21st of uh, May. He said he had been sick for a while. He plans to stay in Barcelona all summer. Please come up and visit. He writes to Robledo on the 25th of July. He wrote to Daniel Fortea 
on the 6th of August asked for money because students would send money when they had done concerts and had accrued the money to pay the lessons that they had promised to send money for. And um, Francisco said he was uh, going to send a couple pieces of music. He wrote to Fortea again on the uh, 6th of September, thanked him for 50 pesetos, pesetas that were sent by mail. Josefina Robledo came at the end of August with her mother. Uh, he wrote to Jose Robledo on the 21st of September. Targa had his final meeting with the violinist uh, Joan Manen. Uh, Targa spoke of his disillusionment, his bitterness, his feeling defeated, and his despair. Strokes are pretty tough. My dad had a stroke, passed away six months later. He had lost the uh, use of his left side. My, my dad was left-handed for his writing, and my dad died in 1988 at the age of 61. Writes to Fortea on the 30th of January, 1906, in Valencia, while Fortea is in Castellón. He writes to Jose Robledo in Barcelona. Tarica does a concert. It's announced uh, on the 12th of uh, May of 1906. He does duets in the third set with Daniel Fortea. Writes to Robledo on the 20th of May, thanking him for 25 pesetas paid for lessons. He leaves Castellón for Valencia at the beginning of June. The famous photographer Novea, N-O-V-E-L-L-A, Novea, takes the photo with eight friends and students. I showed you the two different versions of that photo a couple minutes ago. Concerts were arranged in Barcelona. These were entitled Audiciones Targa, Targa performances. He played three concerts with his 1906 Enrique Garcia guitar. There is a manuscript, uh, Fragments from Tosca by Puccini, uh, written on the 9th of August, 1906, that was given to the priest, Manuel Heal, a longtime friend. He had known Heal since 1875, when he was at the uh, Jesus y Maria boarding house uh, in Madrid. He lived with Jose Lo, uh, Taboso Martinez at that boarding house at the same time. At times they would do duets in the street uh, and police would come and uh, kind of try to get him to go back in because it was late evening and they were playing flamenco pieces uh, on the street. Iris Nacionales as they would say it in Spanish. Uh, at the end of uh, September 1906, Targa composed one of his best known works, a studio, studio in forma de minueto, that was published in Barcelona one year later by Vidal, uh, Limona y Bocera. I showed you a uh, sheet music cover of that. It was below the uh, antique Tena that was on top of it on the left hand page. Part of, part of the page on that I showed you. Uh, Maria Rita Brandi came and saw Tarraga in January of 1907, took lessons. Uh, Tarraga wrote the Morantz family uh, again on the 22nd of January, 1907. In late 1907, Tarraga is found on the top of his guitar having suffered an embolism uh, leaving the left hand, half of his body immobile. It's very terrible. He wrote to his friends on the 7th of March. He wrote to Marantz on the 23rd, uh, 24th of March, same day to Pe Pepita Roca, a student who also owned a uh, Enrique Garcia guitar. Josefina Robledo also received a letter from him on the 10th of June, he wrote to Francisco Correll, somebody who he had known 
since the days of being at the conservatory. Fidel Vidal Limona y Boceta, the publisher in Barcelona, was paying Tarraga 500 pesetas a month for five pieces each month. This was after the stroke to try and give him an income because he couldn't do concerts. He was bedridden. He wrote to Marantz on the 5th of uh, October in 1907. Tarraga traveled once he was uh, up and running to be able to travel. He traveled to Valencia in July of 1907 to visit students and friends. He sees the public view 10-year-old Josefina Robledo at her debut at the Conservatory uh, of Music uh, on November 16, 1907. She was about uh, 10 and a half years old. By the time Tarraga passed away, Enrique Garcia had made 100 numbered guitars, leaving out the unnumbered models made from the early 1890s to 1907. I estimated Enrique made about 340 to 360 guitars. You have 272 numbered. Here's one of his latest things. This is number 244 from uh, 1921. 28 guitars were made after this. This belonged to Cedar Villietti, who uh, contributed to 17 pages of information in my book. It was repaired by Paris Benchetti in Montevideo in 1954. He did private recordings that you can get to hear on YouTube nowadays with that particular guitar. And. Targa had planned a concert in Alcoy, where I mentioned Alhambra makes guitars today. They've done that for about 60 years. Maybe next year's the 60th anniversary. Uh, he was offered a fee for a private concert to take place in the public concert, but he never did the concert. Targa left Barcelona in mid-October 1908. His relatives thought it was for the nostalgia of his homeland because he wanted to go back to Castellón and surrounding cities. He wrote a letter to his son, Francisco Tarraga Hijo, Francisco Tarraga Jr. on the 22nd of October, 1908. He gave many recitals in the home of Mr. Marantz. He wrote them on the 5th of April, 1909. In May, 1909, Tarraga returned to Castellón, did a concert at the Circulo Mercantil. The third set of four pieces was played by the maestro and his student, Daniel Fortea. Uh, both would be using uh, Enrique Garcia guitars. Tarraga would have a 1906 uh, Daniel Fortea, had a 1904. I do have a page on my website where I found a 1917 concert program where you see Daniel Forte uh, uh, holding the 1904 Enrique Garcia guitar. That's from a uh, newspaper published in Spain uh, in 1917. The second concert got reviewed on the 13th of May in 1909 uh, in El Geraldo. So those were concerts where the third set of four pieces was played as duets. Nocturne number no. nine, opus number no. two, uh, by Chopin was dated on the 28th of May, 1909, in Barcelona. Mazurka number no. 22 by Chopin, opus number no. four, was dated the 23rd of June, 1909. Concert in Alcoy reviewed on the 25th of October, 1909, in El Geraldo de Alcoy. 
He wrote a Ramus uh, on the 2nd of December, 1909. A lot of people have played that. That's been in print for a long time. I've had it for a few decades myself. Uh, he wrote to his friend Mamo Lascos uh, on December 5th, 1909, from Barcelona. On December 13th, he was fatigued and had insomnia. Doctors were summoned. He died early in the morning of December 15th at 5 o'clock in the morning. He passed away in Barcelona. God bless him. He was a great influence on serious students of the guitar. <laughs>